Well, it's the end of February 2025, and Topaz Labs has just released its cloud-based video enhancement software, which it calls Project Starlight. The company claims this isn't just an upgrade, but a technological jump because it's the, the world's world. first diffusion-based video enhancement model. We'll explain what that means later, but we bought some credits and we had Starlight enhance several mini DV video clips, a scene from a professionally recorded documentary on VHS, and footage from a video aid camcorder. This first video was recorded on a mini DV camcorder, and the video on the left is the raw interlaced version, which of course looks terrible on YouTube. On the right is what it looks like after you deinterlace and apply some enhancements using the free software called Hybrid. Now, I want to start here because although Starlight really is a technological jump, there are some simple and some free enhancements that you can do that will massively improve how your videos look on YouTube, even without Starlight. And there are videos on this channel on how this is done. Okay, let's get to the comparison you want to see. On the left is the Project Starlight video, and on the right is my best effort using the tools in Hybrid. Starlight does a very good job for objects and grass and trees and cars, but what comes next is remarkable. Because in this shot, I was testing the 200x digital zoom, and what Starlight does here is really incredible. All right, let's look at a couple of stills here. The little uh, Cape Cod house looks nice. It looks good. It is an improvement. But what Starlight does on this blurry shot is just off the charts. Amazing. All right, let's run a different comparison. We now have Topaz Labs Video AI desktop software against its Starlight software. By the way, I fed the video AI the deinterlaced version of this footage at a resolution of 720 by 480, and I used the Proteus model, and I set the recover detail option to about 50%. There really is a huge difference here between the video AI software and Starlight in this scene of this house. This is, this is something else. I mean, the desktop software is not able to do what Starlight can do. By the way, at first, I uploaded Starlight the raw interlaced file, but I found that I got better results from Starlight when I uploaded a QTGMC deinterlaced version. This is also true with the Topaz Video AI desktop software. Before getting to the next comparison, this is a good time to mention another thing you need to do to get your video ready for Starlight. Now, you're not able to upload video to Starlight that's in the DV25 format or the Half YUV format. Now, this is fine because, as I said, you'll get better results if you deinterlace the video first before uploading it to Starlight. And Starlight will accept the H.264 video format, but, for example, it won't accept ProRes. So, if you're going to use it, this is something to keep in mind. Okay, on to the next comparison. Again, we have some mini DV camcorder footage. On the left is a simple deinterlaced version. No special denoising or anything like that. In the middle is my best effort to enhance the video in hybrid using all the tricks I know. And on the right is Starlight. But keep in mind that Starlight won't adjust the brightness and contrast, right? It's, it's just going to try to do some, some denoising and some sharpening of this stuff. So let's run the test again, except this time in the middle, I improved my video, the one that I worked on. I improved it with some brightness fixes and some contrast fixes. And you can see it looks, looks pretty good now. So that's something just to keep in mind with Starlight is that it won't fix the brightness and contrast for you. It's something you'll either have to do before or after if that's important to you. You can use a program like DaVinci Resolve, which is pretty easy to use and will give you good results. All right, here's some more mini DV footage, but this time we're gonna focus on a face. Now, what I find is there's a slight computer animated feel to this that I don't like. Now, this may be a generational thing, right? People in their teens and 20s have come of age at a time where it's totally normal to use filters on their smartphone to produce, you know, these glamour style shots, right? Where, where faces don't look very natural. Anyway, all that to say, I kind of mind it. I kind of don't like this computer animated look. Uh, but, you know, maybe Topaz Labs has done the research and maybe they know what they're doing. All right, on to the next comparison. We're now using a professionally produced documentary from the early 90s. It was distributed on VHS tape and digitized by me. And the resolution is lower than in the previous videos. And what I really want to see here is how Starlight is going to deal with faces in a VHS resolution video. Now, right away, you can tell this video looks enhanced, right? The faces look a little bit like a Madame Tussaud type situation. The racetrack, though, is amazing. I mean, this is like 
so much clearer. Uh, again, Topaz does great with objects and scenery and things like that. So the enhancement of the face is noticeable, right? It's, it's accurate, but it is noticeable. And then there's this. This is very unfortunate, and it's very hard to unsee once you've seen it. I mean, until now, my complaint has been that the people look too plasticky, right? But uh, this is where it becomes risky to use software like this, because once somebody sees something like this in your video, it's, it's just going to look really, really weird. And they may just not be able to watch the rest of the, your video without thinking about that. All right, here's the Starlight version again, but this time I've added 4% noise in Adobe Premiere. And the idea here is that by adding a little bit of noise, maybe it'll trick people into not realizing that the faces look plasticky. I don't know. You can, you can judge for yourself if you think something like this helps. Okay, in this comparison, we're using some Video 8 footage, right? So this is equivalent to, you know, VHS quality. I do like the way that Starlight handles objects, right? And grass and trees. I mean, I, I do think this looks really, really nice. Now, there's a little bit of a face here. So if you, if we sort of look at a still frame from this, you can see that the face is reconstructed, right? It, it's sort of weird, uh, but it also happens pretty fast and it's pretty small on the screen. So it may not be something people notice, but um, again, it's the same issue, same issue as before. Okay, let's talk about cost. Um, now, you don't need to buy the video AI license, right? That's the desktop software. You don't need to buy that to use Starlight. Starlight is a cloud-based software, right? So you just need a web browser and you can buy a monthly subscription. It gives you a set number of credits. And if you use them up and if you want to uh, do some more work that month, you can buy additional credits at a slightly discounted rate. Or you can forget about the subscription and just pay as you go. But the credits are more expensive this way. So how much did these videos cost that you just saw? Well, the six second uh, clip cost 18 credits, which is about $5 if you pay as you go. And the 54 second video clip cost me 164 credits or about $31. Now keep in mind, these clips were 59.94 frames per second. Um, had I uploaded them in the regular 29.97, then it would have been about half the price. And by the way, if you give Starlight a 29.97 frames per second video, it will output it in that same frame rate. If you give it 59.94, it'll output it in that frame rate. So it costs 90 credits per minute. That's at 29.97 frames per second. So let's say you have a home movie that's about um, 30 minutes long, right? So you'll need about 2,700 credits and you can buy a package of 3,000 credits for $200. So that's $200 for 30 minutes of video. Now that's not so great if you're just a regular hobbyist, but that could be a great deal if you're a filmmaker. If you had a 90 minute movie, for example, that'd be about 9,000 credits. And if you get that package, then that's just $500. I say just $500, but obviously if you're distributing a 90 minute movie, I think you probably have that much to spend on a tool like this. So that could be amazing. But this pricing just is not suitable for people like us who just want to improve uh, some home videos a little bit. So how is this done? Let's return to the uh, Kennedy Summer Home video. I mean, how on earth is this software able to take a blurry video and produce this? So I said before, this is called diffusion-based video enhancement model. That's like the fancy term. As far as I understand, this is how it works. It starts off by taking a frame, or maybe it's a few frame, I'm not really sure. And it takes those frames and it makes it look worse by adding noise or blur or something. It just makes it look worse. And now it has an example of the good looking video frame and a bad looking video frame. And it tries to get the bad looking video frame to look like the good one, to look like the original one. So it starts denoising and doing all those kinds of things. And once it comes up with the correct, to call it recipe, to get it back looking pretty close to how it started, it then takes that recipe and it applies it to the original one, to the good one, to make it even better. So that's what they mean by diffusion based. And yet for all of that skill, the software still has to rely on what's in front of it. So what I mean is that you'll sometimes end up with like uncanny valley stuff like this, right? But I can imagine a time in the future, like if we have quantum computers and let's say you upload hours and hours of VHS quality home videos and the software will maybe like 
analyze every face in all your videos from every angle, right? So that if there's a video of a person that isn't clear, it won't do this. Maybe what it'll do instead is it will use its, you know, 3D models that would have, it will have created for every uh, person in your family, let's say, and maybe it will generate something more appropriate. So all that to say, I hope that this is going to get better and better. Uh, but in this version of it, I don't know that I would want to use it for VHS quality videos, maybe mini DV, but not so sure about VHS quality. So what are the enhancement settings? I know you can't change them, right? It's just, it's a one-click uh, situation, but there does seem to be a way to find out what the settings are. When I brought the video into the Media Info app in Windows, I noticed there's a line called encoder settings or encoding settings. And I compared the encoding settings of all the videos that I enhanced uh, today. And I found that these settings are identical, right? I thought maybe Starlight would tweak the enhancement settings based on the type of video, right? Like maybe video eight quality would be enhanced in one way with certain settings, whereas mini DV would be enhanced in a different way because it's a better quality video. But anyways, according to this, the enhancement settings are all the same. If you know anything about this, then uh, let me know, leave a comment. I also read in Reddit that the diffusion-based video enhancement uh, model here, Topaz Labs, is based on this open source model available on GitHub. Now, I don't know if it's based on it or if it's inspired by it or if they're both, you know, of the same family or not. But I guess the good news is, is that there's if there's an open source version of what Topaz Labs is doing, then hopefully that'll lead to some more competition, which will reduce the cost and hopefully lead to uh, more innovations. Okay, let's sum up what we learned. Project Starlight really is a step forward in the field of video enhancement. It really is. I mean, it improves clarity. It recovers lost details. It sharpens textures, especially in landscapes and clothing and homes and, you know, what we'll call, let's say, general scenes. Its ability to restore blurry objects is very impressive. Like this Kennedy summer home thing, this is just unreal. But its approach to faces is less consistent, let's just say. The enhancements often make them look a little bit too smooth, a little bit artificial. Now, younger audiences who are used to digital filters, well, they may think that this is fine, that effects like that are, are fine. But I think those of us who are looking for a more, call it natural restoration, um, I think we'll find it a little bit distracting. The service is cloud-based, so it runs on a credit-based pricing model. Now, it makes it easy to use, but it's also expensive, especially if you have high frame rates or large projects. Professionals may find it worth the cost, though, but I think that casual users who are looking to enhance home videos, I think they will struggle uh, to justify this kind of expense, especially since we can only assume that the tool will get better. So do you really want to invest your money now in something that you know, in a year from now might be a lot better, especially when it comes to faces. I do have some recommendations if the Project Starlight team is listening. First, please reduce the enhancement settings on the faces, right? I know there's a risk of having a scene where the clothing and everything else is super sharp, except for the faces. I get that, I do. But currently, the faces just look weird a lot of the time especially on the VHS and video weight uh, resolution videos. Second, please improve the deinterlacing in Starlight so that I don't feel the need to run my videos through QTGMC and hybrid. I mean, my understanding is QTGMC is open source, so there's, there's got to be a way to work this into your software. So, so please do that. Save me a step. Third, consider some minor auto adjustments of the brightness and contrast. Now, I know this is controversial and potentially risky because, for example, some movies aren't meant to have dark scenes, right? So you don't want to, like, have some kind of system that's automatically going to brighten up a dark scene if it's meant to be dark. So I get, I get that. I know it's a tricky issue. Um, but without making the software too complex, it'd be good if maybe there was a couple of very basic uh, settings or buttons that you could uh, use optionally. Fourth, if you're going to set the price at the price you set it at, then my suggestion is to allow customers to keep their raw videos online on your servers in the account so that we can rerun the video, right? Like, let's say once a year 
for free. So let's say next year there's some enhancements. We can run it all again. We don't have to re-upload it. We, don't, we won't be charged again. I do think there's a benefit to Starlight in this because I think some consumers may say, hmm, why do I want to pay for this software now if it's only going to get better, right? But if you told me, if Starlight told me that I could keep my raw video file on your server and I get you know, I get to to press the enhancement button once a year and I'll get the latest, greatest version using the latest, greatest AI tools. I think that would encourage me to buy those credits now and start using it now rather than waiting a little bit longer, a little bit longer. Hey, if you're still watching this video, thanks. And as always, here is the joke at the end of the video. A man was lying in a hospital bed in Stockholm with no memory of how he got there. The emergency doctors were trying to convince him that he was a Swedish man and he had forgotten his identity. The man angrily refused to believe them and he shouted, You're lying. I wasn't Bjorn yesterday.